Well, hello. It is uh, 425 coming to you from the uh, Portland, Vancouver area. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. Uh, again, a lot of the images I show you are from my weather site, which is portlandweather.com. So I invite you to uh, bookmark that. You can also search uh, the app in uh, both Android and the uh, Apple Store. So I just checked and we'll start off with the radar. No lightning, just really heavy rain and maybe some small hail embedded in these heavy rain pockets that are moving north of Salmon Creek and kind of straddling the um, Cowlitz County line. So that would be you folks up in Woodland getting some of that heavy rain right now. There's rainy areas on the radar from Seattle all the way down into uh, Eugene is picking up a light shower right now. Um, overall, more active today than what I was expecting from this front that has moved in this afternoon. We, we said, remember, the wettest part of the weekend would be this afternoon into early evening. And that not really that poor of a forecast because tomorrow still looks like it's going to be more of a scattered pattern, less organized, more dry periods of time than what we're seeing today. I do want to bring you down and show you the, the flow patterns. Again, no lightning here in Oregon and Washington. You see lightning wrapped up over, uh, looks like, the panhandle of Nebraska and some lightning storms uh, in Kansas. You can just see on the tail end of that. But for us, you see a trough offshore right here where my cursor is. We continue a scattered shower tomorrow, chance, as I mentioned. Today, there's actually a front that came in, um, and that's why the rain has been pretty steady at times throughout the afternoon. Again, if you look, you can see where we are right now. Clouds, a little trough offshore, but not much in the way of any depth of moisture. So tomorrow, while there's a scattered shower threat, it's kind of an in-between day. And if you look, I'm going back and forth. I apologize. But if you look to the right, see this elongated fetch of moisture right in here? Here it is on now to the left, if you look at it in the upper flow pattern. The rain with this primarily is expected to be to our north on Monday, Monday night, and into Tuesday morning. The surface front that is with this will drop through Tuesday morning and bring us the threat of some morning showers. That's a change to my forecast. The big question is, how many of these clouds are we going to get on Monday, which, of course, we have what we hope to, to see here locally, a partial solar eclipse coming in. And it's looking more and more like these clouds, if you just stare at where we are and where they are, it's looking more and more like these clouds will keep us overcast during the day Monday. If that's the case, we won't get to see any of the solar eclipse. Uh, more on that coming up in just a moment. I do want to show you the American GFS. This is the, um, the surface map with the thickness contours. All these dashed lines, what we call thickness contours, they actually help kind of carve out the warm air masses and the cold air masses. Um, and then the, the solid black contour lines is the surface map. So uh, let's use this to see what's going on. Here we are this afternoon at 5 p.m. So if you watch my my mouse, this was a weak front that came in. So the front, see the contours kind of dip right in through here. Here's the front at 5 p.m. already over the Cascades and pushing through Central Oregon. Now see these dashed thickness lines. So the the blue one, 40, 34 indice, that's a minus three temperature at 850. So that's a snow level of 3,000 feet. And if you watch the how the contour lines kind of dip down, this is a cool pool of air that has come in. Shower chance continues tonight. Shower chance continues tomorrow. But again, there's not a lot of moisture to deal with tomorrow. And then here is the system back here that's going to bring us some cloudiness on Monday. So let me... Let me move around so I can get control of this. And let me go ahead and play this into, got to get my map. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Hold on. This thing's kind of finicky. All right. Let me play this into Sunday morning. Here we are tomorrow morning. It's actually a weak high that, that kind of moves in right here. So again, the green represents the possibility of some shower activity. But again, not much depth of moisture, but certainly an ongoing chance of scattered showers through the day tomorrow. This is tomorrow at 5 p.m., Get kind of a weak surface high right here. Follow my, my cursor. Here's the cold front with this system that comes in Tuesday morning. See the red? That's warmer air. So where the contours dip right in here, that's a warm push. And this is all of that cloudiness that's going to be spilling into us as we go into Monday morning. So here we are Monday morning. Here's Monday morning. See the deeper moisture just offshore. 
a warm front just offshore. Well, if that's true, I, I would think it uh, it favors us being absolutely overcast Monday morning. And I'm starting to really not like our chances of getting to see any of what for us would be a partial solar eclipse on Monday with the totality over Texas and, and Indiana and areas back to the, um, the west of us or east of us, pardon me. Here's Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. So this is, mo the green is mostly to our north. There's absolutely a shower chance on Monday and the shower chance gets better Monday night into Tuesday morning. Here's Tuesday morning. And now if you follow my cursor, it's tough to tell because it's a weak system, but the front is right over us, right in through here, what's left of the cold front. And again, the green represents a shower chance. And then look what happens during the day, Tuesday afternoon. See this high starts to build up. I think any rain chance goes away. And then that high expands. That's our sunny, warmer weather midweek, Wednesday into Thursday. But there is a change. Here's this Nick system back here building. It looked like this was coming come in Friday. And I thought we had a chance to hit 70 on Wednesday and Thursday. But now it looks like we may cool down a little bit on Thursday. And this front with the sitting offshore Thursday afternoon actually gives us a chance of showers Thursday overnight. And then here it is Friday morning. Now the front is moving in Friday morning. Absolutely likely rain. See these blue contours, 430. That, that's, it's a chilly air mass again. If I play this into 5 p.m., this is 5 p.m. Friday. That's a snow level about 2,500 feet in the Cascades. Absolutely rainy weather or, or showery weather. This, see how the contours dip way down to Northern California? Again, kind of what we had today in terms of snow levels, 3,000 or 2,500 feet in the Cascades and likely showers. It looks like the showers will be likely extended on Saturday. This is Saturday afternoon. This is a northwest wind coming in around this high, it's kind of a typical breeze. But the snow level is still 3,000 feet or lower up in the Cascades. And where you see the green, a lot of clouds, scattered showers. And then it looks like that breaks. And here we are Sunday afternoon. Sunday to me looks to be a dry day. Still relatively cool. And then there's another system back here. Remember the outlook for April was that April is either going to be near normal to below normal temperatures. Remember also for the month of April, the outlook has been for drier than normal weather. And it could end up being like March. March, we had plenty of days with major rainfall. It's just that most of the days didn't have much more than a tenth of an inch. So we ended up being quite a bit below normal. Again, April could be the same. A lot of days with rain, not that many days with, with a quarter of an inch or more, and that would lead us to being potentially uh, below normal in the, in, the, in the rain department. With that warming weather coming up, there's, there really aren't any watchers or warnings or advisories in any of our local weather offices from Seattle through Portland, Medford, right in the Pendleton. But the Pendleton office did post this, and I thought this was worth looking at. So with the warming weather coming, as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this upcoming week, you know, we'll melt off some of the snow in, in, in the mountains around central Oregon and eastern Oregon. We'll continue to melt some of the snow that's still sitting on the ground in parts of the coast range. And that's just going to lead to, uh, you know, cold rivers with streams running fast. A lot of our area streams this time of the year, rivers are running fast and high anyway. Again, we have a surplus for the water year coming off the winter of more than five inches. So just a reminder, you know, the rivers are running well. We're putting snow melt into them every time it warms this time of the year. And, the, and they're cold and dangerous, okay? So you can't remind you enough about that. All right, let's get back to Monday for a quick second. This is the total solar eclipse. So right here is the totality line, the darker uh, color, again, that cuts over Texas, moves over basically central Indiana, and then moves up over Ohio and into around Buffalo, New York. So that's totality of, of 100%. Now for us, way back here, we're hoping to get about a quarter of the surface of the sun covered by the moon. So this information is courtesy of Jim Todd. So locally from OMSI, April 8th, that's Monday, partial solar eclipse will travel over Portland. The duration of the eclipse will be an hour and 46 minutes. The partial eclipse gets underway at 1033 Monday morning when the moon makes its first contact with the sun. Again, what we're looking at is the moon. Here's the earth, right? Here's the moon. And then of course, here's the sun. So the moon is moving in between the earth and the sun. And it's going to, you know, cover up our view partially of the sun. So that's what we're talking about. So the, the partial eclipse, we start to see the, the shadow of the moon 
covering up the sun at 1033 Monday morning. The maximum eclipse for us will be about an hour later at 1125 in the morning when the moon will be covering 23% of the sun's diameter at 45 degrees above the southeastern horizon. So again, the moon covering up about a quarter percent of the sun that we would normally see. The partial eclipse will be ending at 1219 as the moon exits or finishes its track across the sun's surface. Okay, courtesy of Jim Todd. But obviously, if it's overcast, we're not going to see any of it. So the best case scenario is we have clouds, but they thin out and we get to see a little bit. Worst case scenario is the clouds are just solid, which I think is looking kind of likely at this point, And we won't get to see any of it, at least here on the west side of our state. So lots to keep uh, tabs up there. Here are the uh, current temperatures. These would be uh, 4 o'clock numbers, 52 in Portland, 48 in Salem. Again, 46 up in Seattle, really just another cool day for this time of the year. Let's run you through some temperatures quickly, as I often do. Medford, a chance of showers Sunday, but then all dry Monday, Tuesday. Well, look at that. All dry Monday through Saturday. Wow. Temperatures eventually getting up to 60 degrees on Wednesday. Let's go to the coast, Newport. Showers likely tomorrow. Chance that there is some rain on Monday into Tuesday morning. That's similar to Portland's forecast. And then dry for a couple of days, Wednesday, Thursday. And then the rain with that front comes back in on Friday. This shows beach temperatures primarily in the 50s for highs. Okay. Let's bounce it up into Salem. Uh, chance of shower Sunday. Monday, I think there's at least a chance of a shower Monday. This shows partly sunny. Could be overcast. Again, that's the eclipse day we just talked about. A uh, shower chance with that front Tuesday morning and then dry Wednesday, Thursday, then the cooler weather on Friday, Saturday. This shows mid-60s for Salem on Wednesday and on Thursday. Up in Seattle, tomorrow, 54. Showers around Monday, chance of showers. Remember the moisture with that system that comes in Monday, Monday night, Tuesday is mainly to Portland's north. So that's a better chance of rain up in Seattle, a likely chance of rain into Tuesday morning in Seattle. And then dry on Wednesday, Thursday. And then that front comes in on Friday, Saturday. Seattle's warmest temperature, according to the current weather service forecast, Thursday, it would be 62 degrees. Over in Bend, 48 right now. Mostly sunny skies tomorrow, but chilly, 50. Monday, 58. Tuesday, 62. Look at that. Wednesday, 67. Thursday, 67. Watch some nice weather coming to Central Oregon. And while the front causes rain, at the coast and in the Willamette Valley on Friday, Central Oregon still sunny, 59. And this does not show that weather system pushing moisture in to the Central Oregon area. It still shows it being mostly sunny on Saturday. And of course, that can happen. Here's Portland's seven-day forecast. So tomorrow, uh, again, there's no weather system coming in. We're kind of in between systems. There's still a lot of moisture around, though. So kind of scattered showers uh, there's a chance we'll open up some decent sun breaks. And I really think we'll have noticeably more dry weather tomorrow than wet weather, which will be a big improvement from the Saturday it was 56 though. Still cool. Monday. I think it's going to be mainly cloudy with a light shower or sprinkle chance, 60 degrees. If that's true, we will not get to see the eclipse, but there's hope that the clouds would thin. Tuesday, the front drops in in the mornings. That's an early shower chance or a morning shower chance. I have the afternoon being all dry, warming up with partial clearing to 65. I think Portland hits 70 on Wednesday. We could hit 70 on Thursday, but right now I'm showing increasing cloudiness, and the better bet is we cool down to 67. Still a really nice day. And then that front that we looked at, 45 to 53 showers, snow levels back down to 2,500 to 3,000 feet in the Cascades. And then Saturday, 42 to 53 with showers continuing. And right now I have that Sunday being dry. Uh, I don't think I showed you up on the mountain. I may have skipped over. Timberline right now, four inches of new snow. The base is still 138, 27 degrees. Ski bowl, 30 degrees. They have a base of 5,000 feet of still 54 inches on the ground. The passes currently are around freezing, but in good shape. There's government camp. Santee and Willamette. Cabot Hill's dry out over the blues and 41 degrees uh, for travel purposes. Watch for the chance of there being some snow over the passes tomorrow morning. Uh, again, although this shows temperatures tonight staying pretty steady, uh, 37 to 40, Monday 33 to 44 up there. And then the warmest weather would be well up into the 50s on Wednesday and Thursday. And that's your Mount Hood forecast, courtesy of Hillcrest Ski and Sports Shop. Um, all right. Well, that's it. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. Um, Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, I please ask you to do so. And I'll talk to you soon.